Dude. So, wait, wait, wait. You're saying Latter day Saint symbology shows up in the Shroud of Turin? Yes. That's why John Calvert didn't like it. Ah, yeah, Don gets it. Don gets it. In the palm, wow. yeah. And then possibly another one in the wrist. And so there's lots of significance uh, in that for Latter day Saints. And it shows up in, in the, the Shroud of Turin. But I like European looking huh? faces. However, <laughs> I don't think Jesus had one. Looks actually like a person is the photo negative. To the book of John, chapter 20, okay, uh, verses 3 through 8. Glenn Beck had a guy on from the research team who's a Jew who believes the shroud is authentic. Ooh, really? Yeah. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to Ward Radio. I'm your host, Cardinalis, and today I'm joined in the studio by Brad Whitbeck, Don Brad, Jonah Barnes, and Luke Hansen from the Cougar Chronicle. And today we're talking the Shroud of Turin. Okay, real, not real. It's been in the news a lot lately. A lot of great stuff has come to light. And let me tell you, this quote artifact, end quote, has endured the test of time and will be the subject of this half hour of our program because we got Luke Hansen here who always keeps us abreast of all things uh, hip and cool in, uh, in 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 the Christian world, right? <laughs> yeah, the hip and cool 700-year-old at least shroud. Yeah, it was. Well, <laughs> I'll, I'll call very it modern. Cool. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Without Luke, we would not be abreast. Yeah, so anyway, yeah, grab yeah. that mic, stick it straight down your uh, straight down your face and tell us what's going on, man. All right. Grab face. There we yeah. go. So, <laughs> there so there is this cloth that's about one meter wide and then four and a half meters long. And it is purported to be the cloth that covered Jesus's both top and bottom when he was buried. So meaning they drape it over the top of him, but then it also goes around under his back, under his whole body. So if okay. we pull up the pictures here, we can see that there's the image of a man on this long piece of cloth and, and it's both his front and his back. Okay. His front side and, and his in back the middle side. of the bottom half, that's where you see the face. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Middle of yeah, the bottom half. Yeah. So going to the next picture, okay, that will be a more close up on just the front part of his body on the face. Okay. Wow. Look at that. Rock Is that on. the third picture or the second picture? Uh, that's uh, one whoa. of the pictures. Maybe this one. What? That's so on the shroud. Yeah. 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 Totally. Yeah. What? So, so this doesn't show up in history until about the 1300s in France. And mm. there was a an anti pope that said it wasn't a real relic. Then <laughs> there was the real pope that said. Let me see. Pope Julius II declared it to be authentic and authorized public veneration Wait. with its own mass. Pope Julius II, as in the battle pope? Sure. Well, then he's got to be right. That's my favorite pope. But the, the thing is, when you <laughs> declare it authentic, he's only declaring it an authentic relic. Right. Mm. It's not necessarily declaring that it actually was the cloth that covered Christ. Hold up. Does everybody here have a favorite pope? Do you not? Do you not have a favorite pope? Uh, Shoot, I feel like Peter. I should have a favorite pope. I'm, I'm of course, gonna, yeah, Peter or Francis. I don't know. Yeah. So anyway, for those of you that are not familiar with the Shroud of Turin or haven't seen it in pop culture, you can check out a lot of these pictures on hometownstation.com. We'll have links to the YouTube video of this very same radio program. Um, or if you're just you know in front of your computer, you can look it up. But if I'm not mistaken, the premise of the Shroud of Turin is that. It's a bluddy shroud with like body oils and blood on it, right? Which would insinuate that somebody who it's had gone actually a little it. more than that. It's okay. The the claim essentially, and and you've shown it here. Actually, if you go to the picture before, okay, yeah. The the claim is that this is some sort of like resurrection residue, basically. Yes. That's imprinted Ooh. itself onto the outside of the cloth. So like it's scientists not just like have said that in order to get this kind of imprint, there had to sh had have been had to have been some kind of either high temperature or radioactive or um, implausible uh, imprinting yeah. process that happened to make it so the shroud was like imprinted, almost like a color negative on film. No kidding. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and I haven't done the hours and hours of back and forth and scientific papers. I've done a good amount of research, but not okay. extensive. But apparently. The pigments on this cloth are so thin, I think it's one sixteenth of a human hair. You cut a human hair in half four times or something to get the um, image. You scrape it with a razor and the whole image is gone. It doesn't penetrate the cloth any deeper than that. Like it's a is miracle that say. it was seen in the first place what? and it's a bigger miracle that it's been Yeah, so you look at the back side of the cloth, it's not there. You look on the front side of the cloth, it's there. Mm. It's just very th so. This isn't like paint. This isn't oils. This isn't other stuff that's going to soak into the cloth. Mm. 
I, don't ask me how this is supposed to work, like why Resurrection would, would leave a residue on cloths that are only that thin, but apparently these are the characteristics of the cloth. Okay. So it's had a history going back to the 1300s. We at least know it is that old, and people um, have gone back and forth on it. This, The face, actually, of the cloth was approved by, I think it was John Paul II, no, Pope Pius XII, approved uh, the medal with the image on it, he called it the Holy quote. Face Medal. And it was used by Catholics in World War II for protection. They have like little amulets and stuff. Really? And so this was no actually way. this image. Wait, yeah. Say that again. Pope Pius XII approved this image to be put on a medal, and it was used by soldiers in World War II for protection. What? Yeah. Damn. Wait, what kind of soldiers? Because there were Italian soldiers uh, Catholic in World ones. War II. All right. Ah, okay. <laughs> what was I going to say? Good job. Good That's job. Kinda, of course. Uh, That's funny. John That's Calvin funny. did not think that this was authentic. So whether you want to count that for or oh, well, against. Well, that counts it for. Well, then that, I guess that, it must be authentic. authentic. Now I believe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep, yep. And it's got this. It's got a whole study behind it called synodology, which is from the Greek word meaning cloth that was used in the Bible to say that Christ was being covered in a cloth. Whole thing. There's a whole research team that went and studied this back in the 80s, I think it was. There's some problems with it, of course. Okay. Um, like I don't want to hear this crap. The expert, I don't want to hear this crap. <laughs> no, expert, going up you know, in France they, is a major detriment. They took little samples and the expert, because you see, you see the image. We okay. have the image, but then there's like this white stuff on it. Yeah. What is that? In the picture. That's the blood. So that's oh. a different, that's a different thing. And this is what? apparently the blood that soaks into the cloth when it's placed over Jesus. The expert in microscopy, which is where you take like little molecules and you shoot them through, you take ochem and you learn about it. It sounds way too close to colonoscopy. <laughs> the, but anyway. Microscopy. It's a microscopic colonoscopy okay. of the <laughs> molecules. They, oh my he gosh. said it's some sort of iron oxide thing. It was based in the past. It's not blood. Forget it. And he left the team. Other people were saying, no, he got it completely wrong. Although he's the expert, he got an award for his work from the American Chemical Society, whatever. Once again, for if saying you a religious count that for him not or religious. against him. Yeah. Oh, so you're telling claims. me academia was excited to say that, oh, a religious relic is like stupid. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. He wouldn't have even had to say a reason why and they would have given him a reward. But anyway, keep going. Yeah. So then there was also carbon dating. So this is supposed to be, you know, the, the end all be all. This is the we found the Book of Abraham texts and we're going to yeah. translate them and see if they're what Joseph Smith said they were. So they do the analysis and it comes out to like the 1200s from the carbon mm -hmm. dating. OK, that's not looking good. So, for the shroud. yeah, it's you would say good for the, the expert said that's not blood. Um, John Calvin disagrees with it because he has qualms with how the passage is written. It wasn't actually one cloth. It was two cloths because one of the cloths was in a separate place. And then the carbon dating comes back and says, nope, this shows up about the time it shows up in history. Okay. But, not looking good for the shroud. But now, Cardin, go to the one that looks like a scientific piece of, uh, not piece of paper, but scientific paper. Okay. This, okay, so this is kind of some IR imaging of the corner of the cloth. And this is where they took the samples from for the carbon dating. Okay. The theory is, you can see how it's green and then it goes into orange. Mm -hmm. So the this the light that's bouncing back is bouncing back from different molecules. This corner is made up of something different, different. than the rest of the cloth is made up of. Mm -hmm. The theory is, this was a very popular thing. People are okay. carrying it around. You know, if a guy's carrying it, he's holding it on the corners and holding it up to the audience for it to venerate. Oh. That corner is the most abused part of the cloth. Okay. Eventually it it could have ripped. So, so after a hundred years, if it sh so after a hundred years of being carried around, yeah, or three hundred, sewn, or after three hundred mm -hmm. years of being carried around, if they sew up the corners and then we carbon date the patch that they sewed on, we're not going to get an effective carbon. Date. Well, but they say there is no patch. Ah, but there was a technique back then where you can weave things together without ever sewing them. Yeah, they used to do it in sails all the time, and they still do it on ropes for uh, ropes for boats and things like yeah, that. Yeah, an invisible weave. Mm. So the critics say, oh, that's awfully convenient. You got this invisible weave going on that just happens to be where the carbon dating's from. But if you look at that graph okay. in the photo, you'll see this downward trend. What that's trending is where each of the samples were taken on the cloth because they sent it to like seven independent um, institutions to carbon date and compare the results to each other. The further into the cloth the sample gets, the more the date moves backwards. So the idea is that the fibers have been integrated together. And so mm. the ones closest to where the tear happened are newest. But then as you move down, they're slowly getting integrated into the old <laughs> ones. And it shows up with an older and older and older date. Huh. 
Wow. So how old, so, if you're using this rubric, how old would the shroud appear so, to be? So yeah, if you're using that rubric, if you're saying all this stuff is legit, it's above ground, it was added on, and that trend will take us back to where the original cloth was from, it does trend down to that, you know, 0 AD time period. Ooh. Or 33 Ish. AD. Yeah. Right, okay. 33 AD. I mean, they're not that specific, but yeah. Wow. Yeah, it could. Wait, mm. so by correcting the incorrect assumptions of the carbon dating, you're saying that the Shroud of Turin actually could at least have been from 33 AD, the time of the crucifixion and the resurrection. That's the argument. Now, wow. I don't know if that makes it's, any sense because I'm not an expert on ancient cloth weaving or on carbon dating. Oh, you are here. But well, then why are you here? here. What, yeah, what, come on. <laughs> I know, why, is this why? why it was in the news recently? or uh, This was from before. The, the dating was from... I think before 2000. Okay. Like carbon dating. So, so why yeah. was it in the news recently? I, I think it just shows up in cycles. Uh. I d I'm not aware of anything new, but like Pints with Aquinas had a two, three hour long episode that I listened to. Yeah. Glenn Beck had a guy on from the research team who's a Jew who believes the shroud is authentic. Mm. Really? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So now, there's does some he believe it's authentically there. of Jesus of Nazareth, or that it's authentic of a Jewish burial rite at the same time? What's he the... believes it was the burial shroud of a Jewish man? Well, actually, I take that back. He believes it doesn't have an explanation. Okay, fair so enough. So that so the critics' explanations he believes don't hold water. Hmm. Okay, fair enough. Can I, I offer some skepticism here. Yes. yes. Bring up the image of the shroud of Turin again. Okay. Yeah. Just what jumps out at me. I'm not as big of an expert in sentimentology as Lucas. I mean, okay, no, he yeah. is. But no, the original one that showed the long strip. Yeah, 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 yeah right If here. you were wrapping a linen around a person, would you really wrap it like feet to head and then hot dog style all the way? Yeah, back like flip to them feet? over. It seems like trying to move like a railroad tie like a weird or a you'd, log top over bottom. You'd lay you? the cloth down flat. You'd put him on top of it, and then you and then you pull then you'd it over and down on his head. So instead of getting one cloth that's four feet wide, you're gonna get a cloth that's like twelve feet long. Well, because maybe that's the loom that they had. Maybe it was easier for them to produce cloth in length than in width. Sorry, are you just taking your presentist in post industrial who revolutionist, would a, who would colonialist, like that? white supremacist background <laughs> and assuming that all cloth came out like it did in 1700s Dutch Amsterdam? The, the, exactly guy, the, guy, the guy's face looks European, I would say as well. The image on the shroud. Okay. 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 What's wrong with that? Well, yeah, let's huh? look at the two. Uh, I don't have what? a problem with it. I like European looking huh? faces. However, <laughs> I don't think Jesus had one. Let's look at those two black and you white images next European to each other. Looking? I don't know if that's European. So looking. which one does the one on the right or the one on the left look like the picture of the person and which one looks like a photo negative? Because these pictures are just photo negatives of each other. Okay, well, the one on the left looks like the picture of the person, and the one on the right it looks like a photo negative. But are right? you suggesting because of the supposed light that came out during the resurrection that the photo negative is actually yep. the real one? The one that looks actually like a person is the photo negative of the first photo taken of the cloth. What? It's a photo the negative. Oh. So if somebody's making this up, if some person's going to make an icon in the 1300s for a demonstration, why are they going to put a photo negative of a per before photography was invented and there's all these theories and that it kind of tracks with the book of mormon that way there's all these theories out there and people believe different theories but there's no one coalesced there's like they heated up a statue in a furnace and then they took it out and they wrapped a cloth around it and burned the image onto like there's all sorts of different is there a theory that they actually use like a camera obscura that that it actually is a kind of photographic yeah they like image put it in a dark place and had a statue and shine light through it, because and it makes that, the that, photo negative that was a I mean, that was a technology that people had yeah. developed. The problem Jeez. is they they did that. They like <laughs> debunked it by doing that. The image only stays for like two days and mm. then it fades off the cloth. Mm. It doesn't stay for 700 years like this one does. Mm. Wow. Has anybody ever done any kind of analysis saying, for example, OK, it would require X amount of kilowatts or volts in order to embed this kind yeah, of. Yeah, they have. They have. What did they find? It in order to get hot enough to do that kind of singe on the outside, it would disintegrate the cloth. Plus you don't have those kind of lasers 700 years ago. 
Mm. You are the expert on this, Luke. What are I'm, you talking about? I'm, wow. I'm, I'm repeating what other people have said. Okay. This could all very well be so, just like totally that's what no. makes you, That's all historians are. They read a bunch of books <laughs> yeah. and they repeat uh, a bunch yeah, of crap. That's, 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 that's all historians yeah, that's all are. Right. I'm trying to find Don's breaking point. I'm trying to yeah, find they, Don's breaking point. just read a bunch of secondary sources. That's what the chat says you do. The comments say. Historians are modern gossip. Okay. That's on us. Guys, I want to hear from everybody here. What do you think? The Shroud of Turin, real or not? From what Luke has said, do you think it is real? Or I'll do go you think first. Not? You're Freaking real. That. Freaking real. And it's awesome. All I will right. die on this hill. Jonah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'm walking off that hill. I'm not dying there. <laughs> Don? Um, I mean, if we're asking, do I think it's Jesus's burial shroud? I don't. I mean, I'm open to anything that the evidence shows. I think that the... Most of what I have read, which admittedly has been several years ago, about yeah. the evidence would suggest that it's not. But like, uh, but you know, um, I amend my statement. Not only do I think it's freaking real, <laughs> not not only do I think it's freaking real. If you don't think it's real, I'm going to report you to your bishop, Jacob Hansen style. <laughs> what? And then, oh shit! Like, oh my um, god! So, so, so I think you should be excommunicated. <laughs> he means your Catholic bishop, and they'd be excommunicated from the Catholic there you Church. Go. That's oh, what I'm oh, okay. um, yeah, that's true. So, of course. Um, so, um, Luke was saying something earlier about like that the um, like one of the popes had said it was an authentic relic. Julius right? II, mm-hmm. the but battle then, pope. And like differentiating that though from meaning it's the authentic burial shroud of Jesus, right? Mm. So this can be this could even be a miraculous image, or this could be. Some something else that has like sacred importance to people without necessarily being the actual burial shroud of Jesus. Mm. Okay, cool. And then Luke. I kind of take that position. And this is what I saved for the later part of the podcast was to say, even if this is real or not, we can still take things from us that can uh, deepen our testimony in a way. Cool. But before we do that, Cardin, could you go to the set of like medieval pictures okay and as you're pulling those we're, up we're looking at this photo Look, negative. i just take the position what are the experts say and i say opposite because these people <laughs> have failed me so many times and are ruining our country no <laughs> here, here's what i think as you're pulling those up i think if john calvin said it wasn't i'm saying it is bam <laughs> therefore <laughs> right on i'm in I'm in. The Shroud of Turin is totally in. Fair enough. Yeah, dude, for real. All right, so we remember how that photo negative, well, it's the actual image on the shroud, but it's actually a photo negative. Yeah. Yeah. How it looks kind of weird. Look at these pictures. Um, I have the name here somewhere. Oh, wow. It's this weird... It's this weird name. I, I can't no, find it, it. It's a type of painting where they represent both the side profile and the 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 Straight front on. of the face. Yeah, like, if you actually take a mirror... And you place it down the center of this image. Both sides will reflect onto each other to give you a perfectly symmetrical face. It's not a poorly illustrated image. It's actually an ir- um, image that's meant to be viewed with a mirror. Do you know what I'm saying? So it's kind. Of, that's why it looks a little Picasso esque. Well, and also look at the look at the eyes. Yeah. Especially the middle one. The eyes have this weird, like sunken in thing. Yeah. Then you go back to the photo negative. That's actually yeah. the real photo. Okay. And it gives that weird. Big eye, bulgy like oh, eye, yeah. brow <laughs> thing. Then you see the hair. You see the hair is all poofy, all weird yeah, and poofy. Yeah, while he's yeah, laying yeah. down, and there's like blood matted in and stuff. So the hair gets all poofy, and this shows oh. up in the icons back in the day. The little tuft of hair coming down from the top. And so oh, there's all I these see. there's all these similarities, and I forget the name. It's some weird obtuse name that means like. Um, hand of God images. These okay. were made by actual people, but they all seem to be based on some template that you wouldn't expect, like the weird baggy eyes, the weird bang hanging down, the weird poofy hair, all these similarities that actually show up in the n- photo negative image of the Shroud of Turin. You know, Luke could convince me that Elvis shot JFK when he was visiting Stanley <laughs> yeah. Kubrick's moon studio and that Tupac was the second gunman on the grass, you know. Luke could convince yeah. me of anything. Listen to this guy. And then we go to the book of John. Wait, so we go maybe to the scripture it was record. John. Okay, so maybe it's like the Apostle John, right? He's mm-hmm. like uh, translated. Oh. And he's like just going around with like poofy hair and stuff. like doing Being Jesus a model for Jesus. For being a yeah, model for Jesus. Rock on. Yeah. You poofed okay. That's what I'm going with. You poofed yeah. your hair up. It's yeah. possible. A little so if we go to the, to the book of John chapter 20, okay, uh, verses 3 through 8. Okay. I don't have them pulled up right now. but okay. when So John, it's him running to the tomb. Peter goes in first. And the word um, 
clothing or the word uh, garment, whatever it's called, basically the equivalent of sh- shroud shows up a ton in that verse. Linen? He sees the linen line there. The linens, and it shows up like four times. There's so many details he could give about this experience he's had of first seeing the evidence of the Lord's resurrection. And he keeps bringing up that word. Mm. And it even says like he saw the linens lying there and believed. Mm. So it's like, why would seeing some clothes sitting in an empty hole Uh, make him believe that the Lord was resurrected or he didn't believe a couple minutes earlier? If they have this (laughs) imprint on them from him resurrecting. Yeah. Interesting. Now, oh, so you're suggesting that maybe the reason why John, who didn't first believe that the Lord had been resurrected, but upon seeing the the linens, upon seeing the shroud of Turin. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah, Well, I was just going to finish my sentence here. So I just want to make sure that I understand you correctly, that you're suggesting that John in scripture runs to the tomb, not believing that Jesus Christ has been resurrected. But in scripture, it says, because he saw the linens, he now believed. And you're suggesting other people have made the connection, determining that the linens had the imprint of Jesus on them, the miraculous imprint that we now call the Shroud of Turin. And that that is the reason why he believed in scripture, because he saw the physical evidence as manifest in what we now call the Shroud of Turin. Is that is that correct? It has been suggested by a Catholic Whoa. bishop expert on the Shroud of Turin. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. That's now, pretty re- cool. Regardless of if it's real or not, Cardin, if you could go I to the care. last image. I don't yeah. care. No, just, <laughs> if you could go to the last image, even if this was made up by somebody or as Don suggests is miraculous in some other way besides being from Jesus Christ, you can still come away with a deeper appreciation for the love of Jesus Christ manifested through the atoning sacrifice. So that statue right there is a recreation of the man that would have been wrapped in the shroud doing like anatomical and blood analysis. So rigamortis has set in. So he's in this weird position. That's why the shroud looks a little weird in some places. Oh, interesting. But they have forced his hands down instead of being out. They have forced them down and cover up his parts there. Yeah, okay. And then this is a recreation of all the wounds that he's been inflicted. And even on the back, there's two circular patterns of where the whips would have been hitting. Oh, And they wow. like bend in an arc. Really? Each direction and one's bigger than the other. So it's one taller Roman soldier and one shorter Roman soldier whipping him and making all these little bruises and, and marks on his back. Wait, so they've been able to actually analyze the blood marks on the shroud to determine that all of the injuries that are on this little statue are consistent with the injuries of the person that was wrapped in the shroud? Yeah. That Jeez. statue is like a recreation of who would have been wrapped oh in the shroud. Oh my gosh. Cow. Yeah. And then the, the blood patterns on the head suggest this wasn't some guy like plating a nice little tiara, but they just go out and take like a clump basically of these this thorny bush and stick it on his head more as a cap. Mm. or as a helmet of thorns mm. and then pound it into his head with a lot of force to the point that it goes into the bones. Oh, wow. Jeez. Um, Jeez. Which um, has a mirror in the cap, the priestly kingly cap that the temple workers would wear. Mm-hmm. And so oh, that there's symbolism gosh. there. There's symbolism oh. there. Okay, so let's redo this. We only got two more minutes left. Well, I want to bring up the big thing. Okay, bring up the, the last big two thing. Minutes. Uh, We're going to redo our vote. We're going to redo our vote. <laughs> yeah. I think we ought to hear about some other relics, too, from Jonah. Okay, that'll be bonus materials after we have to uh, say goodbye to our radio audience and encourage them to go to wardradio.com. We'll do that shortly thereafter. But anyway, finish what you're saying, Luke. So you can also see the crucifixion proper marks, and they've been analyzed where the blood was on that. And a guy has done analysis with actual cadavers and the Shroud of Turin and has found that the place that was going to help the Roman soldiers secure Jesus Christ on the cross was it has a specific name. If you do your hands kind of like a bringing your thumb and pinky together, okay. the little divot that's there, yeah, about right here, it has a name, I forget what it is, it's in my notes. That's where they would have had to put the nail in oh, his wrist to secure him on the cross. Mm-hmm. And then oh. there was possibly, from their analysis, possibly another one in the wrist. Dude, but then one in the palm, the hand. In the palm wow, yeah. And geez. then possibly another one in the wrist. Yeesh. And so there's lots of significance uh, in that for mm. Latter Day Saints, and mm. it shows up in, in the, the Shroud, Shroud of, of Turin. Turin. Yeah, dude. And so wait, 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 you're saying Latter Day Saint symbology shows up in the Shroud of Turin? Y- yes. 
That's why John Calvert didn't like it. Ah, yeah, Don gets it. Don gets it. Ah, and so does Pope Julius II. <laughs> and you know what? And you know, while we might not be sure that the Shroud of Turin is real, uh, um, quit being a quit being an academic. <laughs> well, no, look, I'm just saying, like, it's just it's really moving to see the the image of that person lying there because I uh, I believe that uh, whether or not the shroud is real, the the person underneath it was real that jesus christ really was and that all that stuff that he went through and all that blood was yeah it, me. it really gets you an idea of holy yeah. crap the romans were brutal and like what he went mm-hmm. through was mm-hmm. it, it's it, like storybooks do not do it justice no. our imagination doesn't do it justice i mean that is a compelling bit of imagery right there the recreation of uh, what would have taken to create the shroud of turin okay unfortunately on the radio we got to go but if you guys want to hear more Looks like Don Bradley wants to talk about a couple of other relics and some other really cool stuff. So you're welcome to check us out in the bonus materials on WarpRadio.com. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. Before you go, please make sure that you like the video, share it with your friends, and if you haven't subscribed yet, please let this be the video in which we earn your subscription and that you press the alert button so you're alerted to all of our fun live streams and standalone videos and community posts. Also, if you'd like to help us out, please consider joining the channel. Members get all kinds of cool perks and benefits. They get early access to a lot of our videos and special emoticons and emojis during our live streams and preferential treatment there. It's a lot of fun speaking of a lot of fun we have a super cool discord if you'd like to join our discord check us out on wardradio.com there's a link to the discord there also you can sign up there for our newsletter our newsletter is a lot of fun and you can put your email address in there and if you'd like to contribute to the program please consider looking us up on venmo or on the cash app we're on both of those platforms also If you just want to keep watching more content right about here and probably right about here are going to be some more videos. Please check those out. And as always, for this and more, please make sure that you look us up and check us out at wardradio.com.